Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning. <laughs> um, yesterday's demonstration and uh, presentation were really, really wonderful. And um, it left me with many questions. <laughs> so, so I'd like to ask a few of those. For sure. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, so the first one, it's a two-part question. Um, what is your first memory of making pottery and did you always want to be an artist? Uh, my first memory was spending the summers with my grandmother and everything I learned about pottery, she taught me. Just going for the day-long hikes um, have always inspired me to continue the art. Um, I just remember watching my grandmother make her beautiful large pots how she would sit there um, tirelessly um, forming her pots. And just the designing was so beautiful to watch her, her long strokes with her um, yucca fiber brushes. And that always um, stayed in the back of my mind. Every time I try to paint a large pot, that's what I remember. Um, the art of pottery making to me means I can um, support my family and still be able to do what I do. I mean, being self-employed is so different um, from the nine to five or eight to whatever hours, you know, you set your own hours, you set your own pace. So um, just making the art is so beautiful and you get to live off of Mother Earth. I mean, Mother Earth has so much um, material, raw material that you can make beautiful art with. It just takes, uh, determination, um, experience, and, you know, just experimenting with the different clays, minerals, and what you can put together with it. Yeah, I think th the one thing I noticed about your work, um, and I guess this is just my perspective, but it just seems <clears throat> happy and family and community oriented and then when we got to meet you for the first time that is exactly who who you who you are yeah i just express myself through my upbringing like i said our elders are very important in our culture um, so they set the rules and a lot of the people still have that in their family they have um, elders that they'll um, have to sit down with and listen to and get most of the um, just daily lessons from. You know, all the uh, children um, should carry that on, but of course there's a lot of kids that have um, gone to cities. When they come back, they're like um, lost, but once they get back to home, um, they continue to pick up on the roots, you know and get back into the culture ways, the speaking, and, but it's, you know, it's very valuable to me to have to um, uh, listen to elders and follow their teachings. Uh, where do you get your ideas, um, and how are your pieces similar or different than the many other Akama potters? <laughs> um, I get my ideas just from uh, my childhood memories. Um, you know, what we used to do as children, collecting the water in the cisterns. And um, I feel that my pieces are a lot different from other potters because I add the little children, I put little animals on my, in my pot. So just incorporating those little figures um, onto the traditional pieces, the traditional shapes, makes my pieces um, a little more unique than other potters. Do you ever feel a struggle between doing traditional designs and wanting to be innovative? Um, not really. I still paint the traditional, what's called old school patterns, you know, the traditional designs. I um, uh, look at other people's pottery, my grandmother's particularly, and just take little ideas from there and still use the basic red, orange, black and white on the traditional pieces but with my little figures added on there, it makes it quite unique. Yeah. So each piece is unique. So using the traditional designs, um, how, you know, I'm, I'm not from the Southwest, I'm from Montana, but, you know, so when I, when I looked at the train that the Arizona State Museum has um, in their exhibit here, I mean, and you know my first reaction was this is so beautiful and you know this is just an amazing piece of pottery and it's so unique but 
once you told me what the symbolism meant, it just, it was like, oh, oh, okay, now I can look at your pottery, your art in a, in a whole different way because I understand, you know, that the, that the lines mean rain um, um, and the, the different um, symbols. And, and I think, how do you teach people or, you know, when you're at um, museums or, you know, demonstrating your pottery, you know, because I, I would think most people don't know what those symbols are. Are you relaying the message of those symbols to people or? Um, it's been about maybe 10 years ago that I've started explaining more of the meaning to the uh, uh, people who are interested in purchasing a piece. When people, uh, customers walk to your table, they're like, okay, it's a pot. And then when you start explaining all the um, elements or the work and the, you know, the meaning of the designs, everything that goes into the pot, it brings them to appreciate the piece more, especially the meaning of the designs. I mean, it can just look like a design, but if you put some kind of meaning behind it, it really brings um, their attention to the piece and they appreciate the piece a little bit more. What have been some of the challenges you've had to overcome to do your art? Um, in the art business, it takes um, a lot of um, dedication, determination, patience, no, mostly, because um, when you're teaching pottery like to the um, younger um, children, they want to do the whole piece in one whole step. Um, I was explaining during the pottery making um, that it takes time to put the pieces together because you have to let them firm up before you can go to the next stage of either reshaping the piece or attaching pieces the way I do. So it does take a lot of patience um, to do the pots. Um, whereas if it's um, something flat, it's a lot quicker. And um, so I tend to, I learned a lot of uh, patience and determination to continue to do the art. Um, going to art shows is a, a whole uh, different story because going to the art show, you have to always, um, I mean, be on the positive side, smile at everyone and try to explain, you know, your pieces to them. How do you balance making art with other responsibilities in your life, like f family or another job? That's um, difficult at times. Um, especially in my situation. I won't go into detail, but um, uh, family always comes first to me, so I try to balance that. I um, get what I need to get done at home, make sure there's a meal there for my husband, <laughs> and um, getting up early. <laughs> That's what uh, um, I need to do a little bit more often, and just being prepared for the next day. And uh, most of my days start early, so I get the morning chores done and just go to work. You know, I set my own hours. I can take a lunch break when I need, but um, it just, you know, it takes a lot of um, dedication too. So that's how I start my day. <laughs> you know, you have to balance um, family and, you know, appointments and, you know, what you need to do first. But, you know, just stay focused and it'll get you through. That's my livelihood. I have a passion for my art and I love doing what I do. I don't consider it work because, you know, it brings me great pleasure to just to sit there and do my figures, come up with new ideas, you know, just just thinking about, you know, what I'm going to what the rewards will be, the smiles I'm going to have on other people's faces. So, you know, that keeps me going. Um Explain how you fire your pots and why you use the methods. I personally um, started um, firing my pieces in the outdoor pit fire that my grandmother used to um, build for her pottery. But as the shards were shifting, um, when the cow dung was burning, um, the pot shards that we covered our pots with um, would shift down and it was starting to knock off all the little animal uh, figurines like the little ladybugs or butterflies I was attaching to my little animals and it was um, discouraging you know because then the piece got lost in all the ashes so um, as I um, 
started my storytellers, I said, I'm not using the outdoor fire for that. You know, I just started with the electric kiln because by then, when I was doing it full time, electric kilns were, um, you know, very popular. Um, it was more temperature controlled and it was a lot easier to where um, the success rate was better with the electric kiln. Um, what tricks have you learned that help you in your art making? Um, it's probably um, thinking ahead of time as to how much material you're going to need and to have that amount um, readily um, uh, you know, able to use right away. And having someone like um, do your work, do your hard work, which is my husband, and um, he's always happy to do that. He does it, you know, just a little at a time, but you know, it adds up with the grinding of the clay, um, the grinding of the mineral pigments, uh, gathering the raw material. So, but um, there really isn't any tricks that, <laughs> or shortcuts that I can take, you know. It's a lot of work, dedication, but I love it. You tend to critique your own work right. too. And by doing that, it makes you focus on what you need to do or look forward um, to the next piece, you know. That, that's what I've learned, you know. Well, I need to make sure I have enough paint to cover this whole piece, you know. So I plan ahead on, you know, just the amount of um, mineral that I have there. Do you have any favorite pieces and can you describe that? I do. I love doing the storytellers and I love doing the friendship bowls and also the little single figures. Um, the storytellers, because it reminds, us, reminds me of my elders, you know, my mother, my grandparents, how I learned the art, and the fact that we learned everything from the elders, because that's what they represent is oral tradition. Everything is handed down to us, all the lessons, all the songs, the prayers, so um, storytellers and then friendship bowls um, remind me of my childhood as well as the little single figurines that I use. Um, I put them on little logs or little um, tree branches and the friendship bowls remind me of the times when we had to go get water in the water holes and we have fun just messing around in the water, making those, um, putting our buckets down on the wet sandstone and turning them until they made a ring and the next person would do the same, we, you know, we, we'd see how deep the ring would get. So just, um, you know, just my childhood memories, um, all my little pieces there. So I'd love to be an artist full time one day. Um, would you mind sharing how you go about selling your work and any advice you might have for me? Um, the only advice I have is to smile, talk to people, stay in touch with them through, um, business cards, um, just explain how you do your work, the amount of time. I know that uh, a lot of people don't have the time to stand there and listen to all this, but it's most important to have um, business cards. Mm -hmm. And you know, if they're interested in anything, they have a way of getting in touch with you. Um, but just to pull them in, um, smile and you know talk to them and tell them this is my art I'm from wherever and um, just a little explanation quick explanation as to your pieces when I vend I get up early pack all my things in my car um, take some clay or um, pieces of pottery that I'm going to paint and I'll sit there and paint and also display my work there so that has been the greatest gift for Akama and um, I'll continue to do that as long as I can, you know, because it's great exposure. There's so many people that come to visit Acoma Pueblo, and um, it's so easy for me to vend there. And I don't have to do as many art shows because um, I can sell right from my home. I've gotten to where um, people know where to find me, and they'll come from afar just to come buy a piece of pottery. So. That was, uh, you know, it's great to have that cultural center there. In regards to collectors, um, are there any that really stick out to you? And um, can you describe your relationship with collectors? Um, a lot of the collectors will, um, if they're from out of state, they always tend to find you at the art shows. Because if you're going to an art show, 
um, most of the art shows that I do are juried art shows. So they know where to find quality work. They know how to um, communicate with the artists themselves. And at times we do, you know, give our own prices because it's, um, it's our piece that we don't have to market up the way the shops do. Um, so I think it, they appreciate it more when you can buy the piece directly from the artist. And I have a few um, people that will continue to um, come to the art shows to see what I have that's different to add to their collection. So it's always good to see people that you know you've already um, sold to before and some will come back for years and years and a lot of collectors that I've known since I started have passed on. So, you know, it's a long lasting relationship you have with people who appreciate your art. Is there a piece of art that you haven't created yet that you really want to create? A large pot like my grandmother. <laughs> you know, she did large Oya Star water jars and I would really love to do one of those, you know, and be able to do the traditional designs that she did. And that's my main goal is to try to create a large water jar and to be able to outdoor fire it. You know, that I've always wanted to do that. Um, you mentioned you learned from your grandmother. Is there anyone else who mentored you or inspired you? Um, I still get inspired by other potters, uh -huh. um, my own sisters, who are great potters, and um, my aunts, um, just going to different art shows, looking at what people can create. So that keeps me motivated. I was, I was glad I was able to, um, to accompany you yesterday in the vault because I was able to just observe, you know, wh how you looked at other people's work and, and, and yeah, how you were, you know, taking photos and stating that, oh, this is a great, you know, I could use this little section and, and do, and do an interpretation of it. You just want to keep trying new designs, new patterns, and that's what I was like, oh gosh, I can't wait to get home to try these patterns or, you know, get, I want to make a candle holder or, you know, just, you know, just looking at other people's work just makes your mind, you know, say, I want to do this. It, it challenges you, you know, because you get new ideas everywhere you go. Yeah. What was a design or pattern that you saw in the vault that you want to um, probably the lightning pattern and the old traditional parrot design. Yeah. One that looked very similar to the one, um, the design, the parrot design that my grandmother used to do. Yeah, with the flowers and um, just the way the rainbow was, the colors that they used. So I think I'm going to try that. <laughs> so right now I'm beginning to consider myself an artist. Um, what advice would you give? give me if there's any to give <laughs> um, <clears throat> determination patience um, just learn to from for me from the start it was like um, a lot of criticism but I've learned to take that in a positive way and to say well okay she was laughing at this you know why I can do better next time so just to be always positive you know and to think positive, thinking that you're going to make, create something um, more challenging for you or um, what the customer wants. So it takes a lot of patience, though, and determination. Just keep going. Have a, if you have that passion in your heart, just keep going, and um, you'll get there, you know, just to stay motivated. You know, and learn to appreciate. If you've, if you know you've done your best, then you've done your best. You know, and that's all you can do is try to do your best. You know, and however it turns out, you know, just look at it, focus on that, and see how it can be better the next time. You know. Well, Marilyn Ray, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you too. I learned a lot from you. And I think I've made so many new friends here and I appreciate 
everyone's hospitality here, all the nice words, the nice comments, and it keeps me motivated knowing that people still do appreciate my work and I'm still recognized and I had a great time here. Thank you very much.